We welcome you here to a big night of fights. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside my ringside partner, Teddy Atlas. Looking forward to all the action today, and we're just about set for it. Cruz is showing you that intensity that so many of the very best will display during a ring walk. Totally focused. Dragon's making his way to the ring with a determined giddy-up in his step. Introducing first, in the blue corner, from, from Mexico, Mexico City, Alto Rivera Cruz. His adversary, fighting out of the right corner, the Dragon. Remember, guys, obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch him up. The talk is done. It is simply time to fight. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. Choose your feet. Cruz's edge is speed. He can get in and out. He can get you offensively. He can get away from you defensively. Yeah, he has radio tires, and you got to take some air out of those tires. No better place or way to do that than go downstairs. the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. He missed with that headshot. The Dragon's blocking ability is doing well for him there. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by the Dragon. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. holding. Cruz is so dangerous with that accuracy. A two-punch combination landing. Ten seconds to go in this round. Good smooth work by El Terrible. That's classic counterpunching. Yeah, what he did was he pulled that right shoulder back. You know, he just pulled it back, gave him the left shoulder, and then gave him the right hand. You gotta stay busy out there, all right? Because you're losing this fight. Why? Because you're not throwing any punches. Here we go, round two is underway. El Terrible is on the receiving end of a very good counter punch. The Dragon's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. Parries the punch, comes back with the hook. Got blocked, and now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Comes 
smash right back at him with a left hand. Went to the body there, but unable to connect. Oh, and the right hand comes into play by El Terrible. The tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, it gets caught. Good job staying away from the danger there. El Terrible is doing a really good job of being defensively sound, of being patient, and waiting for that golden opportunity for some offense to come in the mix. Well, that's exactly what he's doing. He's waiting for a mistake to be made. You know, he wants a lead out of his opponent right now so he can make a miss and bang, come right back with that hook. And we come to the end of round number two. The Dragon's in complete control here as he takes a rest after a round in which he really dominated the action. Is there anything, Teddy, that you see that he should be thinking about when he gets off the stool here for the next round? Yeah, you know, he should follow up on his lead, on his edge, on his advantage. You know, he's, I noticed that he's hurting him in the body. Well, now start to double up that hook. One downstairs, one upstairs. Cruz is able to land a nice, clean left hand. El Terrible's punch is far off the target. just wasting away some time with that clinch. Come on. Not able to land the headshot. Tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. It's okay. Pay him back. Pace yourself. Goes up top with a right hand. Blocks the headshot. Oh, that's good stuff. Firing right back with one of his own. Good work by Cruz. Let's go. What are you waiting? You want this fight? You know? Then let's get moving out here. This guy's going to win this fight. You don't take it. So three rounds are in the books here. The Dragons up two rounds to one on Teddy's scorecard. Punch stats don't always tell the story. But in this case, he's been the busier man, throwing more punches. Yeah, but he's also had to do a lot more work just to keep his opponent off, just to keep him defensive. Does that hurt him as the fight goes on? Good return fire that time. The Dragons work in training camp is now paying off. Do you see the accuracy and the effectiveness with that combination? He just gave his opponent a really good taste of how fast his hand speed is. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we talk about power, and we see that power, you know, can damage a guy right away, obviously, and it can intimidate an opponent. But hand speed can do the same thing, and I think it's an intimidating right now to his opponent. He's afraid to let that jab go because he might get counted with one of those lightning right hands. Halfway through round number four. That's a forceful two-punch combo by El Terrible. Awesome. 
Hit the elusive target with that straight right. Ten clicks of the talk. So they close out that round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, I know you watch uh, very closely how these trainers go about their business. You were under the tutelage of one of the true legends of the game, the great Custom Auto. Yeah, I mean, I was fortunate. Quite honestly, those opportunities, situations, probably don't exist anymore because we've lost a lot of those, you know, really great trainers and managers that boxing was their whole life. I spent seven years with Custom Auto, and they learned the nuts and bolts from a physical, technical point of view of what's important to give to a fighter, but the psychological part. To understand the pressure that a fighter is under, the fear that a fighter deals with. And if you don't understand that, all the other things don't mean anything. Because you have to understand how a fighter is feeling to understand why he's behaving or not behaving a certain way. The Dragons putting on a show here, defensively putting on a show. And it's helping his offense because, you know, he's creating holes, he's creating opportunities, holes that he's throwing as he makes his opponent miss. looking good now it's looking bad for him well that's exactly why because nothing was coming at him his opponent wasn't throwing back he got a little lax and he paid a price Cruz is the kind of boxer that wants to do just that Find it. and bang and away he goes oh he's got to beat the count of ten here Gonna keep taking this test, rising up after being knocked down. Nice strike after catching one by the dragon. How about a return to sender with the left hand? Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Ten seconds remaining in this round. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. El Terrible is out to show everybody that he's fine. But we saw what happened in the last round. He was knocked down in that last round. Does he have to prove something to himself as well as proving something to everybody in this arena? Well, that's the right question. So he's got to revisit his memory banks a little bit and know that he's already proven it to himself. He's been in this position before, so he has to regain that confidence and understand that he can deal with this. He's done it before. By sending more than one at him now, the combo to the head. El Terrible's defense did a good job there, able to avoid that punch. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by the Dragon. Cruz is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Halfway through round six. Now he's got his opponent in a tough spot as he's backed him into the corner. El Terrible is landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Oh, he is absolutely affected by that right hand. Never saw it coming. Worst kind of right hand you can catch. He should tie up here. 
The Dragon's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. You gotta love the work by Cruz. You're leaving yourself open too much. Cover up. It's over. He's tired. He's got nothing left. Here we go. Action to start the seventh round. The Dragon's got to be thrilled with what he was able to accomplish in the first half of this fight. And as we start this round, clearly he wants to keep things in the same order. Well, part of the testing of anybody being successful in anything, in boxing, in anything, is how do you handle prosperity? We're going to find that out right now. I know that sounds like a good problem to have, but does he get carried away with himself? You know, does he get a little cocky? We're going to see. yourself keep it going up the cut trying to go downstairs but off target El Terrible's work rate is very high. I looked at the punch stats, and you can see that he's a busy guy. I don't think he's an effective guy, though. A lot of these aren't landing. Well, you have a reason to think that, Joe. Guess what? I agree. They're not landing. Target by El Terrible. A well placed left hand up top. Solid right by El Terrible. Focus. Final ten seconds. You have to. You have to be busy. This, this guy is beating the shit out of you. You have to throw three or four punches in a row. You can talk. This has turned out to be a good-looking fight. Teddy, I think it's clear to see that the Dragon's in control of this fight. He's up on your scorecard, as we can see. But it's been a tough night. Yeah, and it's also clear to see that his opponent has a chance to come back because he has been competitive every bit of the way. Teddy, what would you recommend based on what we're seeing here tonight? Well, two Aspen and then... Oh, oh no. Actually, I would say a little counter-punching would be just what the doctor ordered. That's a better prescription for him. Flush right hand to the head. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. Cruz is showing you that sublime skill right now with that two-punch combo. The halfway point of round number eight. Missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Targeting each other, the exchange was something special. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Last 10 seconds of the eighth round. Work in the body. 
El Terrible is fighting this fight as if somebody glued the bottom of his shoes to the canvas. Tent. Somebody should check that right now. If I was in the corner, I'd call the referee over and say, hey, can you check that for me? They are back to action here, but that action has only favored one man. Completely one-sided. Hard to see the scorecards coming into play here with how dominating he's been. Cruz is showing you a little defensive skill there. I don't move away from that punch. Good shot to the head with that right hand. Well-timed by El Terrible. He took a step back, landed the counterpunch. Exactly what he wanted to do. <laughs> 90 seconds into the ninth round. Oh, they both land flush with uppercuts. Cruz is almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. And he just holds on there. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. The Dragon's making for a very frustrating round now for his opponent because he's moving so much. He's really utilizing that ring and showing that he's got the better footwork. Yeah, he's doing what the old times would say, Joe. He's giving angles, keeping his opponent off balance. His opponent is strong, but he needs to be set to punch. He's making sure he doesn't allow him to get set. Doesn't give him that kind of landscape. One for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Hey, you gotta see that. Final chance. Last ten seconds of round nine. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. There is hardly a doubt as to what this result will be. I know anything can happen, but all that's happened all night long is one guy punishing the other. Well, he looks like Kobe Bryant on a good night when that basket is... 20 feet big. I mean, he just can't miss. He just missed that shot up top. That uppercut. Did you see that? And he goes down again. Will he get up from this? count knockout loss for him ladies and gentlemen by knockout your winner the dragon as we saw he was up on your scorecard throughout the evening the dragons now a winner by knockout Listen, you want to win, you want to get to a title, you want to be successful, but you want to make money. And this is one way to ensure you're going to make money, scoring knockouts. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. That does it ringside.